So this is one of the five webinars on why, the Y Academia topic that has been scheduled over the next two months. And this series will also be repeated continuously throughout the year, um, uh, just um, on a regular basis. And it will always have this five fixed um, sessions in that will enable you to learn a bit more about why is it of value to use academia. The, the first webinar we had about three weeks ago, and that was on the enhanced user experience. Um, today we're going to talk about customization and integration. And then the third webinar in this series on the 23rd of May will be about technology and hosting. And it will not be pure technology, it's more about what value does the technology that academia uses, what value will that bring to you. The first one on the 10th of June will be on um, cost efficiency. And then the last one we will do about um, managing the change when implementing an SIS. So that is a bit more a soft skill one, but um, how do we assist in the project itself to manage the change within your institution when a big project like a new SIS is addressed? I think before we start with academia, let me again, um, because not all of you have um, attended one of the webinars before, let me just again put Eiffel Corp into the picture of um, what do we do with the student experience and how does academia fit into, into this picture? So I'm going to share my screen. Um, let me, give me a second. Let me just unshare the one that you're sharing at this stage. I'm going to share a new screen. Okay, so can I have a, just a quick indication if everybody can see my screen and um, Julian can just maybe monitor the... I'm, I'm trying to see the... Okay, so if you, if you can't see my, sh see my screen that is shared, it should be the one with the blue Eiffel Corp um, background. Just tell, tell me. Um, okay, so... Okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to make sure before I continue. Okay, so I think Go, um, as a company, in essence, manages with a grouping of different products, manages the student life cycle and the student experience at the institution. I thought quickly putting this into the picture for you because academia is the biggest, but one of the components that we manage within a student life cycle. And the grouping of systems that we have, we resource basic breed across the world and bring them into one um, integrated process. That is one of the values that Alpha Corp a company can bring so that it is not only one product, but as you grow in your institution or as you have needs, um, we also address the other needs that you as an institution might have. So I'm going to, if you look at this screen, you can see that um, typically the student experience will be from when the students start with the administration process, they go through um, attending classes up until they graduate. And in this process, through the different products, we manage that cycle at the institution. So if we just give a bit of attention to Digicum, which is our whole, LMS offering. So those of you that know at Afrocorp, our biggest offering has always been LMS and we are expert in the learning management system space. In different learning management systems, um, we also have our own DigiCamera um, learning management um, product where we offer the hosting, the implementation of that product. We offer how to roll it out at your institution effectively via our digital teaching and learning courses which is CETA accredited, um, and let me go back one. Um, and in that way, we just maintain that, sorry, my, we maintain that life cycle at the institution of not only the administration part, but also, especially in this time in COVID-19, we, um, the student administration is definitely not the biggest issue that any of the institutions have. Um, we are experts in first managing the digital teaching and learning part and then integrate that with your student administration. And that is a, a, a total unit in our company. 
that now, of course, assists many of the universities because that is the, the biggest and uh, imminent need that they have at this stage. Then the second part of what we manage is the, and we turn it in the academic integrity of the institutions. And most of the institutions in South Africa uses turn it in to do um, check against the um, authentic, authenticity of a uh, um, assignment that is submitted or a research paper that is submitted. And it also allows things like online automated grading and peer reviews, a very powerful and, and, and widely used product in the South African market. Then with Mono Labs, we supply a framework to use the institution where you can design your own apps without um, technical skills and knowledge. So the framework contains the technical, technical skills and knowledge part. And then we um, use that um, to assist your institution to be able to design your own apps, no coding needed, plug and play into your framework that um, we, we've designed. And that will also give you the, the um, opportunity to change and add applications as often as you want as an institution. Now, you can think in this period where COVID is on your doorstep that a communication tool like Moto Labs, which allows you to deploy in the, exact, in the same application framework that you've been communicating with your students, regular new information, push a little bit of that information, and changing that communication information as often as you want. So a very powerful tool in a period where um, online um, actions is needed. And I think we all know that, um, well, worldwide, not only South Africa, education is going to look a bit different after this. And I do believe the online actions like Moto Lab that allows you to communicate with your clients, your students easily, of course, the digital teaching and learning part, that is just going to become a bigger norm um, that it used to be, and that it, that it's going to be an important part in your cycle of your student management. And then lastly, the academia system, where we allow the institutions, or where we um, enable the institutions to manage their administration and their finances via academia. So I'm going to give you a very short view of what's in academia, um, and then only focus on what what we want to focus on today um, and not going to go through all the nitty gritty parts of of the system again i'm also going to jump a bit between a live system and the powerpoint and just bear with me as i switch between the screens zoom is not always that um friendly for switching between the sharing of screens but i do want to show you just a bit of view on on the live system also Okay, if you have questions, just raise your hand or if you want to discuss anything and Janine can just um, um, alert me as we, as we go along. And just give you one second. I just want to admit somebody that has just entered and give them a few seconds to log in. Okay, so if we then look at in that picture of academia that I've shown you, where does the um, cycle of the student start on an academic level um, and on an administration level? And how do we manage that via the academia system? So the academia system is a typical SIS in many ways where it manages your life cycle of your student, starting with campaigns and inquiries, admissions and registration, in managing your total residences. Of course, on this level, it already also manages your student finances because any of these actions that takes place raise a financial fee and the fees are managed within the academia system. Then full residence management, and of course, your academic management starts. So setting up your structures, full attendance, timetables, the cycle of the student as they go through the study period is managed in this. One of the, the biggest add-ons or value adds of academia is that it is interfaced already with the e-learning system. And then, of course, Eiffel Corp is specialist in the e-learning space. So we offer, as part of the academia system, we also offer the e-learning level, um, not depending on what platform you want to use for e-learning. So there's quite a few that's used, but we, um, we have operated and we know all the e-learning platforms managing the interfacing of that, as well as then 
knowledge transfer, skills transfer, digital teaching and learning courses for your lecturers or your um, academic personnel and, and many other things. Content development, taking your own content, put that into a, um, LMS. This LMS data, because of the integration between the two systems, is now seamlessly part of your academia system data. So as a student register um, and is for a specific subject and is assigned to a lecture, that data goes to your LMS. The actions is done in the learning management system, like um, assignments that is done and exams that may be written and classes that's attended, marks are allocated. And that data comes back to the academia system to form part of the student's academic record again. So there's a, um, a, a, a seamless interface between these two. Then continuing the student life cycle examinations until we get to graduation. So that total cycle of the student is managed via this academia system. Then of course, the finances is just the integral part of that. So the management of the fees and the full payment of the fees um, to, for students or in, in anybody that um, studies at the university or in, in college and school, that is managed, and of course, scholarship management. That is the cycle, the main cycle of a student. But many times, that is also where the main value of a system ends. Well, and I, I can again not stress enough that this period has proven that so many times that there's something that used to be an add-on to a system, but is now one of the most important parts of the system. And that is the communication part, because the communication part allows you, if your students are all sitting at home, and your lecturers are sitting at home, for you as an institution to still com communicate with all the stakeholders um, and continue with your process as is. And academia is very strong on communication um, first is through the portals for stakeholders, so all stakeholders, and that be maybe students, faculties, management, parents, sponsors, and you can um, design more portals. They are a, a very strong component where it pushes information and delivers information to the stakeholders to enable them to have an up-to-date feed on what is going on in their own life. So a portal is for a specific person, and the last thing, the lectures, for example, the lecturer can seamlessly manage the clauses on an administration level via the portal um, without having to be on the internet or on campus anyway. Then, of course, also the messaging. So there's a CRM um, embedded or built into academia that does manages the messaging and the notification. Very easy to use, very powerful tool to communicate and send information to the students. Part of that communication report, we will look at the reports quickly today to look at the um, customization of reports, dashboards, statistics, that all comes from the communication level. And then just the issue might, of course, there's a link in the system that allows you to structure everything, and that comes from your organizational structure and rules that you set up, your administration pro, um, structures that you set up, and then some general services and components that helps you to just um, complete the cycle or the picture of the student at the institution. So that is in a very, very small nutshell um, what, is that, what is done by the academia system. So we started off to say that um, we started off to say that today has a specific focus if you have missed the previous webinar where we spoke about the user experience with the user um, interface, then please let me know and we can just go back to that. Um, uh, or we can send that to you actually. Sorry, I don't know why my screen is acting up. Uh, if it doesn't want to continue, just give me one second. I just want to see where, why it stops every time. Okay, I'm just going to un unshare the screen for a second. Give me one second and then um, see if I can. See why the screen does not want to continue. Okay, 
Let's see if this picture. I think it's just in a loop. Okay, I'm just going to share that screen again and then we can continue. Okay, can I just quickly get from anybody a confirmation that you can see the new screen? How can I customize academia to fit my needs? So that I don't continue and you're all waiting for the screen. Okay, thank you. So I want us to look today just at these few points that says how can you customize academia to fit your needs? Because if you are at this stage in an institution where you work with a product or a system that you cannot easily customize to fit the needs of your institution, you know the, the total frustration that you have that for everything that you want to change, you are dependent on the vendor. For every time that you want to adjust the system to fit a specific process or need of your institution, you have to go back to the vendor or be satisfied with what you have because that's the way in which this very big Titanic that you have work and it doesn't turn that easily. Um, that, that is a very difficult thing. The system may be as good as it is, but at the end of the day, it is still a system that needs to fit your institution. And each institution have got something that is different, whether that is within the market, if you're a school, university or TV, whether that is within the sector that you operate, so you're private or you're public, there is some things that's just different for your own institution. And of course, there's a part that your vendor will change, but there's also a part where you want to have the capability to change something quickly that is small enough that it will, it's within your control to change, but you don't want to wait for somebody else to go and change that. And those are the things that I want to, to um, spend some time on today. So the customizing within a process, customizing information to, to the end users, whether that is the things that you send or that they view, customizing your screens, customizing your reports, and then just to ease your minds about integration, which is also a form of customizing. So I think let's start off with customizing a process. Because processes are always individual per institution. And if I can use the example of applications to start off with, that is a process where you as the institution not only wants to make sure that the way in which this process runs um, forms the path forward for your background continuous administration process, but you also want to use your application as a marketing tool for your um, institution. Because this is the first view that the, the students or the um, uh, applica applicants will have of your institution and how you um, display that. And you want to make sure that this is fitted in a way that it um, enhances what you as an institution, the message that you wanted to, to convey. And that is why the application, online application form, is a total customized form as part of the implementation process. And it is the, you don't have a fixed form that you have to take and then start to change. The question is, how do you want your application to work? So if I can take the example that you see on screen, this institution said, let's do a four-step approach and make it easy for the, the students to understand. And we designed it with four easy steps and the students complete that via their website so that it's posted on the institution portal and they proceed with the application. So that is a, one of the ways just to show you that it can be a graphic process or it can be a um, more standard text-based process. Um, that depends on how you as the institution want to approach this. So I'm going to show you two more examples. Um, sorry, and that is a, I just want to show you how proud of South African I am with my ringtone. Um, apologies for that. Um, and, and then I want to quickly show you two examples where other institutions have also taken the same process, the online application process, and has customized that for their own institutions. I'm going to unshare the screen again, and that is the part where I said that um, uh, Zoom is not always that friendly, you have to share and unshare, except if I'm missing something, you have to share and uns unshare a lot of times. So let me go 
and just show you okay so i hope everybody can see can see this screen um the screen is an example of okay let me just read the notes as i go along so i make sure anybody somebody can see that thank you um so this is the example of an institution that has designed in the academia system a portal for the faculty or lecturer um, for them to work on. So and this is this is not a fixed format. This I'm going to show you more screens where this it looks totally different and with the lecture view looks totally different. But you can design this one to make sure that you good morning, CQ. Um, Yes, that's right. You should see the Ashoka um, Education Foundation screen. But this one, for example, has been designed in a way that this institution finds it easy for le their lecturers to work. So a lecturer has got his own schedule, and you can see you can see his schedule on the one side, and then all the courses that that lecturer offers, and blocks for assignments, students, mark entry attendance going on like that. So that is the view. Where the, this institution has decided this is the way that we want to display it for our lectures. If I go over to another screen, I'm not sure if I am. Um, Julien, can you just tell me if I if I move around within um, Internet Explorer or Google Chrome, if you can continue to see the different screens, or if I must also share and unshare? So I'm moving around within these screens a bit, and you can just tell me if you can continue to see it. Okay, one second, I'm going to show a new one. That is just for your interest. So this is the way the way that if you log into academia, you can see the different um, screens and the different logging um, to the portals. Okay, so this is a, another view of exactly the same thing that you have seen that you have seen in this one. So I just quickly want to monitor and see if everybody exists. They can see if I move around. Okay, so I can see that. So this is the different views of the same thing, and that is where the customization comes in. Now this is a customization that you can do from the start as you implement the system, so that you don't have to um, start off with a base product. And then if you want to change anything in the system, it's, you, you have to start to um, speak, get a quote, change, and then you start all over with the process of teaching the people how to use the system. The system with implementation already customizes to a lot of the things where you want to do it in a specific way for your institution. So this is another view of exactly the same thing. Again, for a lecturer, this lecturer just wants to, to sit in a different view, and this is the more standard one and the dash lists look a bit different. And we will get back to the dash lists. Another one that I want to show you, for example, is if you go to, I'm going to quickly go to one of the um, online ones I can show you. It is just by doing a very simple process, this institution has used the academia system to start the online application process like that. So full-time student in staff training and continue. So that is just to show you this process, which is usually a very specified individual process at the institution. There is no one size fits all in the academia environment. From the start, we will design it in a way that fits the way in which you as an institution wants to use it. I think that is enough said of that. Let me just go back to the PowerPoint. I'm, uh, Apologies for the switching between the two all the time, but I do want to show you a bit of a live system as we go on. It just makes it easier. Okay, so that is one thing. In a process, whether that is your lecturer management of their classes and their students and their courses, whether that is your application process, within that process, the system is already customized for you as an institution. Then next, customizing, customizing the inf information that goes to the end user and I'm talking about online um, display of information. So any, inf 
information that you want to display or send to end users can be customized in the per different stakeholder grouping. Um, and that is where the um, dashboard comes in because each stakeholder, all stakeholder groups can have a dashboard and within the dashboard, you as an institution has got the ability to change and the display and the type of information that you display in a dashboard. So I'm going to just stop again. I want to show you live some of the easy ways in which you can move around in a dashboard. Just find the right session here. So if we go back to the academia system, this example is an example of a student dashboard. So the student dashboard starts off with this information and there's a long list of dashboards and you as an institution decide what dashlets do we want or what pieces of information do we want to display for our student grouping and it's as easy as you as an institution take them away you can collapse them and enhance them or you can just take them away and you decide which of them is relevant for us and what do we not want to, to display you can also decide where you want to display them on the dashboard so as easy as the reading material is a bit more important Let's move it to this side or let's move it upwards. The student knows his own details, so the student information is not that important. We can move that a bit downwards. And in that way, you can customize the dashlet, you as an individual, to fit the need that, that you have easily without having to go to a, through a change system change process. And again, I'll say that if you don't see the attendance dashlet for um, uh, for example, for a student, if you don't see that as important, you will simply take this dashlet part away and just continue with the rest or add new ones. Easy for you to customize that information. The same goes for a lecturer and the same goes for management. So this is an example of a management dashboard that I'm going to show you. And again, this if you show management the dashboard, you as an institution will have very specific needs on what is the type of information that we deem necessary to display to our management group. And you can literally change your dashboard as you go along. Um, you can also have certain periods where certain information is important. Um, and a good example of this is in the registration period, your registration numbers is important, but a month after that, when registration has closed, that is not as important anymore. And again, the same process, you can move these dashlets around, you can change them around. You can hide the ones that you don't want to be seen. I don't have all of them with a lot of data in here, but if you look at these ones, it's a completion tally, that's the empty one. So, down your inquiries. So if it's in your inquiry period, it will be important for you to show management or the, the, the faculty or the department that works with inquiries so that they follow up on that. Once inquiries is, is finished, you will only show it to the people that works with inquiries and this will not be um, as important in your general management dashboard anymore. This dashboard can be customized and changed per user um, on, on this screen. So each user has a customized dashboard um, with information that is important for them. And again, um, with the dashboards, you can chop and change and move these ones so that it fits the period that you're in or it fits the user that you are working with now. The last one I'm going to show you is again one in the lecturer. So this is the lecturer um, uh, um, self-service or the lecturer portal. And again, the lecturer has got some dashboards that they want to see. So it's, this is an easy way for them to view the students like we looked at it last time and then capture attendance and marks for the students. But this, if this is not the most important part for this lecture, the calendar dashboard can be moved up and the um, managing of marks and attendance can be moved down. Um, the student the lecture wants to see how many seats are filled because it's now in a registration period. So this lecture can just move this dashboard a bit up um, so that it's in the beginning of the dashboard and monitor that data uh, regularly.
attendance, if it's in a period where it's important to monitor attendance more closely, they can again move that up. So the message here is that you can very easily change the information that you display to your different stakeholders through the portals and where you have the control to change these portals without going through a vendor process. That is within you as an institution and sometimes within you as an individual user. It lies with your own con in your own control to change that type of information. Okay, I think that is enough set of the dashboards. I'm quickly going to stop sharing that again and just go back to the presentation. Please stop me if anybody is not following who's got questions. Um, I am a, by nature a born Namibia, so I know I talk fast. Um, you're welcome to just tell me to slow down a bit. The third way in which you can customize academia to, to fit your own needs, and this is a, a unique way that many times there are um, traditionally developed systems on all the platforms that does not allow this just purely because of the technology that they use, or they do not allow the end user to do that, um, themselves, it is always a change control process where there's cost involved to change the screens. Now, academia, you can change the screens um, in two ways, or two ways that I want to um, highlight today. The one way is by changing, when you implement the system, the names of fields. So if you don't use um, qualification, but you use course and if you don't use subject but you use module when you implement the system this these terms are changing the system to fit the terms that you want to use in the system and throughout the system whether it's on reports or in screens those terms that is applicable to your own institution can then be used that is one of the reasons why it's easy for academia to operate across industries or sectors in the education sector because if you are a private school, you will have different ways of, of, of naming conventions from a public university. And from the implementation period, you can already um, change this naming convention so that you don't have to go through a, a, a more painful process later on. The second thing that I want to show you is that you can simply, um, on a screen, add or take away fields that is not within you as an institution, not within um, your business. So if you look at this screen, for example, if you from the start say that we do not use, um, uh, what, what field can I, last name, but we use surname, then the system will be implemented with surname instead of last name throughout the system. The next institution say, no, we don't want to use surname, we want to use last name. No problem, then it's implemented with last name. So that easy it is to change the names of the fields um, with the implementation period. The second one is if you, for example, so that you know, when we operate, we have another um, second middle name that is very important and that we want the students to complete then you can yourself add second middle name on your screen as one of the fields to display. You can also choose on which of your screens you want to add them. Do you only want to add it to fields where it's relevant, for example, for a lecturer that needs to complete that information, but if a student registers and they don't need to complete that information and it's not a mandatory field, then you can just display it on some of the screens. If you decide that we do not use a middle name, and we don't want to clutter our screens with fields that we do not use, you can simply go to this screen and you can hide the field middle name um, on an institutional level. That easy it is for you as an institution to customize these fields. I'm not going to take you through the boring process of how you do that in the screen. It's a very easy process. You click and you click and you change the name or you add the field or you hide a field. But the message is that you do have the ability on any of your operational fields to add and change fields to fit what you as an institution want to use in your own system. 
In the second last one, if we look at the customizing of reports, now we all know that um, reporting tools are actually wonderful things these days that you can do with. But many of the older traditional systems have been designed without a proper reporting tool embedded. And now they have to interface from a reporting tool that is standing as an outside product. And that causes a lot of problems in the ease of use of the system. So the academia system from the start has been designed on justice of reporting as a tool. And this, that just gives it all these capabilities to do dashboards, to customize your reports, um, to have statistical reports. So there's uh, many things that just makes it so much easier. Um, even the, the drill engines for the selection of the data because of the um, engine that we're using for, from Jaspersoft side. I also want to show you that if you then, as an end user, if you are working um, regularly with lots of, with, with big masses of data, and you want to make sure that you can easily um, design a report every time based on what you want to display at that stage, or what you want to, to convey to the people that receive this report at that, report at that stage. How easy it is for you as an end user to manipulate that. I'm just going to stop sharing and go back to the live system. Okay, so now I'm back. Let's go to any of these. It doesn't actually matter. I'm going to be in an administration one where I'm working as an administration process. Let's look at admissions and at applications. Let's see if there's enough data here that I can show you something on. Okay, I saw. Where did that one go? I think I just closed my own session. Give me a second. I'm just going, <laughs> going to go back. Um, I think that was a bit quick. I'll just open up one again. You can see when, we, when I log into the academic system, you can see the single sign-on screen. Oh, I bypassed it out because I'm already logged in. It allows you to have one single sign-on screen and the users go in um, based on the profile that they want to go in. So let's look at um, applications. As an example. Now I'm working with this masses of data and I want to make some sense of all this application data. Now usually I want to see all these fields because I want to um, have a full picture of what's going on. But now I only want to, to um, get a list or a report on specific things. Then it's as easy as you as the individual user to say, you know what, well, either I want to just change the um, sorting sequence ascending to descending, or I want to look at this lot of um, fields or columns that's on my screen, and there you can see on in the drop-down list all the additional ones that you can add just to see um, the status, full status of application, like reason for withdrawal and other things. But for now, I don't want to see all these fields because it's just making me confused there's only a few things that I want to monitor now and um, the rest of the things I want to take away. And as I take away or add, you can see my screen in the background just changes and immediately my screen is adjusted to the fields that I've selected to look at for this period. Why is this so useful? Because from this screen I can directly say, now take this to Excel or take this to a PDF report or do a bulk download of the data, document downloads. So you can, before you start with the process of sending the data to Excel and then starting to manipulate the data in Excel, you can already do this part in the academia system and then you can start to work with your data. And it's easy as next time I say, now you know what, now I again want to see the program status and the first name and the last name and the academy. And you add the fields back and you can see all the fields that you've added back. So the screen is adjustable for you as a user 
on how you want to the data that you want to view. The same principle applies in the dashboards also. So if there's data in a specific dashboard, specific dashlet that you don't want to see, let me see if I can quickly show you a good example. Um, so if you look at this one, like reading material, I don't want to see all of these fields. Then I can simply take some of these. Now this is a very <laughs> congested um, dashlet anyway, but um, I can simply take some of these fields away and I don't need to see all the fields um, that is within this. So easy for me, oh, I don't want to do that now, easy for me to monitor the data and easy for me to change the screen based on what I want to monitor or what I want to send forward in a report now. And the, the um, message from this is again that for you to enjoy what you've got in the system, for you to enjoy the effort that you've put into the system. Communication and reports are two of the enjoyments that you get from your data in the system. But if it becomes a very difficult, tedious process to get to that enjoyment, it is of course not, not that nice to, to try and design a report or to try to um, download data or to communicate. And that is why the system keeps on trying to make these parts very easy for you as the end user so that you can literally, without technical knowledge, change to fit what you want to do with the system at that period and make it easy for you. The same is not with the customization, but the same goes for the messaging. So that is why we also make the messaging part of the system so easy. As you operate within the system, you want to make sure that it's easy for you to send messages and um, to communicate with the users and not make it a difficult sideline process. And that is why the system has this messaging tools embedded in the system to make sure that it's, it's easy to, to, to um, use them for the end users also, because not all end users are technically inclined people. Um, academic personnel, their focus is on academics, not on knowing how to technically use a system. Okay, so that is the, the part. I'm going to unshare my screen again. Um, so I hope everybody's still following on that. We're nearly, nearly there. So that is the part which allows you to easily change on what the system must display for you as an individual user. And then lastly, I want to touch on the integration because integration is one of those things that it's easy for any system to integrate, but it's usually a very costly process for you to integrate your SIS to any of the other products. Now, academia has got two values that it can add in that way. The one is that it already has a lot of existing integrations that is just part of the system. One of them is like your LMSs, so there's already a seamless integration to Moodle. There's XR integration, web portals, integration with accounting software, with biometric, biometrics, RFID cards, payment gateways, mobile apps, so that integration has already been built into the system. The APIs is there and available, and you don't have to go through a costly process to integrate these things that is usually part and parcel of the business systems that you have at your institution to manage the other business parts of the system. Those things are already um, available. But then also within the ISO Corp team, there's a a division that does integration with a lot of knowledge in the education sector on integrating the different pieces of the student cycle. And we already have pre-published APIs in academia that you can use for many of them, as well as the knowledge of doing this quickly and easily um, without going through a very long process to sort out um, what is actually needed for this integration. Because for most integration types, like to uh, HR software, accounting software, LMSs, payment gateways, we have already done that in academia. So if you use a different one, um, software, piece of software from the ones that we've integrated to, the base and the API is there and it's easy for your institution to then um, just add to the specific platform that you use and for us to do the integration. Integration is one of the things that should not become such a big and costly effort in the institution that you, at the end of the day, wish you gone the very old 
traditional way of choosing one single ERP that can do everything. That is not according to me to the way to go anymore. Best of breed, you choose what is the best student management system, you choose what is the best accounting software, you choose what is the best LMS, and the software vendors must have the ability to make sure that that integration is part and parcel of what you, um, uh, um, how you want to use it at your institution. That should not be a, a stumbling block um, in your process to get one seamless process. And it is not because, I mean, we've done this integration so many times and within the academia system there's already predefined integrations for all of these things. I think that is where I'm going to stop that I see our time is nearly up. I don't want to go over time. So if I can just recap on that. Customizing the process by from the start deploying the process in a institution fitted specific way, customizing the information to your end users, customizing your screens and your reports, all user um, abilities that they can do it themselves, and then the integration which is made easy um, because of the already integrations that's in the system and the knowledge that we have on designing APIs for integration in the education sector. Okay, I think that is where I'm going to start. Let me just go back to the session and see if there's any questions. If you have questions, now is your time, please. You can just chat, you can put your mic on or you can post questions if you have. Um, or if you want, you can send us a, a um, mail and I'll just get in touch with you after this if you, had, you want to have more of a, a detailed discussion. And then Jolene is going to send out the recording to everybody that was um, registered for this um, webinar. She's going to send out the recording link so that you can use that. And then please make sure that you join the next one. So we will have another um, session, as we said in the beginning. The next one is on technology and hosting on the 27th of May, then a cost efficiency one, and then managing the change when implementing an um, SIS, which will be the last one in the range of, of the series of five webinars.